done vegetatively because of plants. <clears throat> but they have yeah. their way to I, do. I, I, I remember, you know, I remember growing growing up, half the fun of eating watermelon was spitting the seeds spitting, out at everybody, yeah. you know. And uh, so how, how long ago did they develop a, a seedless melon? Oh, shoot, it's probably, I, I want to say probably 20 years. I bet you seedless yeah. melons have been around that long. I'm, you know, I'm not positive, but I'd say, I'd say 20 years that we've had seedless watermelons. Well, in, in, in a ways, it was interesting to, to find a seedless watermelon that didn't have one seed in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right, though. Yeah, usually you find one or two at least immature, the immature white seed, and that's what makes them can make them as a seedless. You know, people say, "Well, there's some there's some seeds in there." Well, guess what? It's still, you know, a seedless watermelon. It you know, they're immature seeds. An occasional dark brown seed is still you know in there, but it's you know. If your if your melon is you know ninety nine point nine percent without seeds, that's seedless to me. Do, do you think do you think eventually that all watermelons will be seedless? Because I, I would imagine, I suppose a, a melon with seeds in it can be uh, a little challenging to eat. You got to kind of scoop around them and everything else. So maybe in the future we'll never have a, a watermelon with a seed anymore. Um, you know what? It's hard to say. I I, I don't. You know, it, it's kind of funny because I just got thinking of that. Like you said, you know, as a kid having the, the seeds and spitting the seeds out across the patio. You know, because you, you know, take it out in the grass. You know, and you're sitting there, <laughs> you know, watermelon seeds across and see how far you could shoot them. Um, I don't know whether or not kids actually have that pleasure anymore, like, you know, to do. Um, but, you know, they are fewer and fewer to find with with seeds. Uh, it, and it used to be the seedless watermelon was usually 2 to $3 more expensive than a seeded melon. But... The seedless watermelons have a tendency to be smaller, um, you know, smaller varieties of, of watermelon. Your great big ones that feed a crowd are usually going to be your ones, I think, that are still going to continue to be seeded melons. I'm not, you know, not for sure. But again, too, on production for uh, flavored items that are, you know, with watermelon-based juices and things like that or watermelon pulp, um, you know, in... in uh, you know, ice cream and sherbet and things, you know, those kind of uh, industries or, or applications. So I'm not sure on the seedless or not, how, how, it'll, how it'll work out in the long run. Yeah, you know, th this watermelon was from South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, ab about how far up north would you say uh, is a uh, watermelon product, uh, uh, you know, where it, it's taken the market, there's a lot of it? I, all, all the way up. I mean, I remember, yeah, you know, watermelon grows up, yeah, you know, because it though it has a long season, it's just maybe what some of the later melons. But um, let's see, if they're planting in May, June, July, August, they're still getting a harvest before Memorial, uh, before Labor Day. And so, like you yeah, said, yeah, that, yeah, and and see now, Florida, we can actually grow a second crop of watermelon. Where other, you know, other areas, it's you know, they're finishing out those crops. But yeah, I'd say even all the way up to the Northeast, you know, into wow. yeah, yeah, that it's a. I I want to say it's about a ninety day, maybe a hundred and ten day, uh, hundred and ten day crop. But if they're starting, yeah, I don't know if they start from seed in a field, um, quite possibly. Or from small starts where they can actually get a head start on mm -hmm. their plants, you know, six weeks earlier, put them out after their danger of frost, and next thing you know, they're they're six weeks ahead of schedule on on production on that. Yeah, I was gonna, I was going to say real quick in closing, uh, we're having a wonderful wet season. Uh, I over the last month, I'm getting very close to a foot of rain in my pool in my gauge, and uh, it's it's it, every day it rains at least if not a half an inch more. And uh, I guess the, the it's going to continue the way the forecasts are talking. But uh, I'm glad to see all the rain, and uh, the, I, I guess the thing is to try to st stay dry. And thank God for the rain; it kind of cools it off a little bit. Yeah, it does. When we get those afternoon showers, see now where I'm at, I haven't really gotten a lot of that rain we got a light shower yesterday and um 
I, I believe I, you know, I think it was Kathy Steider supposed to, I don't know if she put it on In the Garden, but I saw a picture on, on her rain gauge where she had like four and a half inches oh, really? of rain. And I had, you know, I had a light yeah. rain, but I had all the lightning. I love to watch the lightning. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and, and a light rain, but it still helped cool it down. Rain somewhere still cooled us down. So, you know, I'll take, I'll take whatever I can get. I mean, I don't mind having a, right, a right. day or two of not having quite as much rain for the sake things can, things can dry. Let that water table drop down a little bit so the next heavy rain event uh the the ground can take it well the the, the aquifer must be doing pretty good like I, like i said uh, over the last month maybe up close to six weeks now uh i i've totaled I'm, I'm getting very close to a foot of uh, water oh yeah yeah it's it's some some of the areas have gotten quite a bit um others others again like i said not quite as much um but hey, it's we're coming towards the end. You know, take enjoy what we can get right now for the sake that uh, it is already mid-August. Scary thought there, um, and that come the end of September, we really that rain chance drops significantly. And October, yeah, November, yeah. I mean, we still get some rain, just not near the volume of it or the amount of days in a, you know, in a week of getting rain. And so... Uh, yeah, well, what, what, once you get into, like, October, that it's usually all, it's always cold front rain. It ain't just off the, right, off the ocean or the Gulf. Right. So it's, uh, you know, it's, more, it's like you say, it's more spotty. But, but we do usually get uh, some rain. That's pretty, pretty sure, beneficial. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah, and we and we take whatever we can get on that because uh, it's you know it is a matter of that's that's what we don't, we don't get snow in the winter time to uh, bring up our our water you know volumes in the aquifer and such and the amount of water being pulled up on a daily basis either for irrigation or just uh, you know drinking water is is quite a bit so we you know. Got it. Okay, Got it well, for the uh, best. Uh, thank you for talking, and uh, stay dry and have a good day. Oh, yeah, yeah you too. You too. Caroline, look, look at this video that somebody uh, posted on Facebook of okay. uh, winter Oh, yeah, the kangaroos. <laughs> yeah, the kangaroos hopping about in the snow. I did oh, see my that gosh. this morning. Isn't that something? That was, that was pretty neat. You, you forget that uh, the southern hemisphere has winter right has, now, right? Right, right. Wow. Now, yeah. now, what about plants down there? I mean, that, to me, that looks like Florida, except with snow. Well, I mean, that's just a big open uh, grass plain, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah, it is. Uh, all right, if you'd like to call Carol Ann, the number is 622-9622. We are getting close to a uh, break. Look at the owl. Sorry. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, and Caroline has some <coughs> gifts to give yeah, away. Yeah, we so. sure do. At the at the bottom of the hour, when we go to the news break, we have four sets of gift certificates. You're getting a Bob Wines twenty dollar Bob Wines Camellia Gardens and Nursery gift certificate, uh, and it's strictly for plant material, not on the wind chimes they've been talking about and other other products. And also with that, you're getting a twenty dollar gift certificate for Time Out Billiards and Grill, um, which is located on. South Pine and the same same wow same shopping center as the police department and zone fitness and that so you know you've got um, so we've got four of those that we'll give away at the bottom of the hour okay we do have a phone call right now if, cool. if I just answer the phone and you can hear me um, we're taking calls for questions right now and calls for the prizes in about two minutes so just so you know good, uh, good morning Virginia, you're, you're, Lillian <laughs> yeah and I wanted to tell you how I got the idea for the um, for checking if uh, the gar my garden tree right. would qualify for uh, largest yes, in Florida right. or largest in Marion County. I happened to be watching the uh, Sunday Jane Polly show, and it had. Um, the largest uh, rose bush, and it was located in uh, Texas. Oh, okay. And that's when I got the idea the for my oh, I gotcha. Tree. I just wanted to tell you that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I just, I still have not found out how to, how to find out if it's the largest or not. I believe we... Lost her call. <laughs> she hung up. Something yeah. went out, but but that's okay. Um, you know, I, I heard she had her radio on, so it's um, yeah, you know, I yeah, I'm still not sure how to find out 
if yours is the largest or who to who to even speak to on yeah, something like that. Enough, but right? um, yeah, even that, how how do you really find out if it's the largest rose bush? People go out there and go, well, I'll just let mine grow this year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, at one time we had a. Uh, um, Oh, what's it called? Cherokee rose, which is one of those long fence roses. And it was up 12 feet in the air and draping over top of the garage roof. It was spectacular. You couldn't see it from the ground, but when you pulled in the driveway, you could see it over the roof of the garage. All right, we're going to take a break right now. If you want to call in and claim the prizes Carol Ann has talked about, you can do it right now. I'll take calls at random, 622-9622. Fox News, I'm Chris Foster. The FBI confirms to Fox agents have raided a home in the U.S. Virgin Islands owned by the now-dead accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein. We don't know what they were looking for, but investigations are ongoing into anyone else involved. Also under investigation is Epstein's suicide. An Associated Press report says that Jeffrey Epstein was found with a bed sheet around his neck at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Manhattan. One of the guards overseeing him was a fill-in who had been pressed into service because the facility was short-handed. Epstein was supposed to have been checked on every half hour. Fox's Tanya J. Powers in New York. A California Highway Patrol officer is shot and killed just off a freeway in Riverside by a man whose truck was being impounded. Our officers returned fire. CHP Assistant Chief Scott Parker there says the driver was killed in that shootout and two officers are hurt, one critically. Two bystanders are hurt, we're told, not seriously, by flying glass. This is Fox News. Napa know-how. At Napa Auto Parts stores and Napa Auto Care centers, get a $25 prepaid Visa card when you get any Napa automotive battery. It's the best deal for some of the best batteries from some of the best car people around. But we might be a little partial. Anywho, pick up any Napa automotive battery and save $25. Do it yourself or have it done for you. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores and Napa Auto Care centers. While supplies last, offer ends 831.19. Pros like you expect more out of the brands you use every day. Lowe's gets it. It's why we stock the best brands so you can get the job done right every time. And now we're offering pro customers a chance to give one of those brands a try for free. Right now, pros can get up to 10 gallons of Valspar paint absolutely free. And experience firsthand how Valspar delivers a smooth application and reliable color for all your touch-up work. Take your next paint job to the next level. Do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Valid in Orlando and Phoenix stores only. Requires return authorization number. See ProDesk for details. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. In addition to our pasture mowing and tractor services, including our zero-turn mowers for your fence line finish. Also available, stump grinding, rototilling, and fence row spraying. We are family owned and operated, licensed and insured, and farm ready. Howell Gene, G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com, 352-629-2440. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. Gene is a proud United States veteran. Here is your one-minute news brief. Marion County Public Schools is reporting that over 38,000 students showed up for class yesterday. That number is expected to reach 42,861 in the coming weeks. The popular horse shows in the Sun program, better known as HITS, sold its California and Arizona operations but is keeping Ocala. A shooting Sunday at the Sunday's Motel south of Ocala has left one man dead. A 28-year-old mother was so upset that her children were rezoned to a new school that she threatened to shoot up the school in Palm Beach County. Researchers at Florida's Atlantic University say global warming is turning Florida's sea turtles all female. A Wendy's restaurant in South Florida was shut down when inspectors counted more than 72 flies in the kitchen and the dining areas. One of the world's largest bass fishing tournaments, the Fishing League Worldwide, is coming to Lake County in 2020, and the NBA experience has opened at Disney Springs, giving basketball fans of all ages a chance to test their own skills. And that is your news brief from the source. Times of sun and clouds on this Tuesday with a shower or thunderstorm around during the afternoon hours. The high 88 at the coast, 91 inland. And for Tuesday night, mostly cloudy, low 74 inland, 78 at the coast. Wednesday, partly sunny with an afternoon thunderstorm likely, high 88 at the coast, 92 inland. And on Thursday, times of sun and clouds with a shower or thunderstorm, especially in the afternoon, high 86 at the coast, 90 inland. From the Florida Weather Center, meteorologist Joe Lund. Marino from Palm Garden and we are the best. 
As a matter of fact, we're the best of the best. You can put us to the test and we'll keep caring without any rest. The Ocala Star Banner has a contest, you see. You can vote for Palm Garden and you can vote for me. Go to Ocala.com. It is easy to vote. You can vote every day, so please take note. Palm Garden really is the best. As a matter of fact, we're the best of the best. All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. It's uh, time to return now to the second half of In the Garden with Carol Ann. Again, these, uh, this particular show is, is very caller-friendly. We definitely want to hear from you. If you have a question for Carol Ann about your garden, your lawn, your plants, anything, or if you just want to brag about it, maybe you did, like that lady, she's got a really big, what is the brochure called, Leon? Hers is a gardenia. Gardenia. Yeah, she's gardenia, obviously yeah. doing really well with that. So if you want to call in, uh, we welcome it. If you want to post a photo of the things you're growing. Uh, Carolyn has a Facebook page for that, and it is simply called In the Garden. In the Garden. That's so, right. Real, simple as that. Real easy. Real easy to remember. And we are the one that's out of Ocala, because there is one that was, Sanibel. what did we say, Sanibel? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which there's just, again, I, I, I believe, you know, a bi- I believe there's is a business. Yeah, So probably so. still pretty interesting to be part of, but um, ours is ours is pretty local. Um I did. A friend of mine uh, shared a, or and she's she's on the Facebook page. Um, uh, shared a thing from Lake County Extension on building backyard habitats. It's coming up this Saturday. It, you know, it's on there. You can click on the thing to get a little more information and see it. It's like a five dollar cost. You do have to register it through Eventbrite. And if you've done anything through our county extension, you've had to pay for it. Eventbrite's real easy uh-huh, to uh-huh. to work through. Um, I just think they charge you a fee because I, you know, uh-huh. a small fee. So, but it's still going to be under ten bucks to go. And and this is just you know backyard. This backyard habitat. It's for encouraging uh, you know natural native wildlife and things like that into the landscape. And that's one of the many principles out of the Florida friendly landscaping. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it might be something that's of interest. It happens to be this Saturday. So. Um, if you are interested, yeah, click click on the thing and see what it says. I unfortunately have to work, so I can't go. Um, now, a habitat for what? Not a habitat for like um, if if you're looking to put in um, like edible gardens and things like that, or edible landscaping. It might be for the birds ah, and other okay, wildlife. Okay. If you put in water features, it might be for for frogs and and toads and things like that. So, ah, okay. Yeah, you know, just to to improve, uh, you know, native natural. You know, habitat kind of thing. Butterfly gardening, um, you know, gardening for nature. You know, so you never left the ground. See, when I was a kid, I was always near the ground. You know. I'd see bugs and frogs oh, I loved all the time. It, yeah. I, but I, you're I, always there. Yeah. Like, I, I always think someday I'll retire and I'll be back there again. I'll be back yeah, near the ground. I mean, I don't. I don't get the opportunity. I mean, and, and people look at me really funny when I stop suddenly and I go, oh, look. You know, because I'll, I'll check <laughs> something out. I mean, I've been known to watch a you know, watch watch a um, a wasp and a what was it the one day a wasp and a lizard trying to you know kind of threatening at each other <laughs> and and I think the lizard finally won. Yeah, he just grabbed him. But um, yeah, I did learn that one thing. We yeah the the like I said we had um, summer institute last week. Um, really interesting for for us. You know, mostly some of the stuff doesn't necessarily carry forth or I'm, I'm still waiting to get um, the electronic stuff sent to us so that I can review everything, you know, because you, <clears throat> you sit and listen to presentations, uh-huh, but you don't uh-huh. process it all at once. A few notes I took don't necessarily make sense until I can put them back with the, with the presentation uh-huh. to go with it. Um, but I did... Um, I think I did share that one that the photo on the lethal bronzing that kind of came through on that. Um, but where was I going on that? But there, yeah, there, so there is some other information. Not really much more on a on a you know cure or what to do. If you think you have an issue, I would probably still be contacting Extension on um, on something like that. On, on the lethal bronzing. But we had also gone through some stuff on learning about a new St. Augustine variety that should be coming out. Um, you probably won't find it by the piece. 
you know, to do a repair, not for several years until more of it ends up in landscapes. No. <laughs> until, you know, a developer decides, guess what, I'm going to begin to use this kind of turf grass. But it is one that was developed locally. It's called Citra Blue, and it was developed up at the, the – up testing station up in citra mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so they they get to name it those the, the people working with it get to name it and i think it's kind of a neat uh neat name for it it is it is a saint augustine it's supposed to have better drought tolerance um does have some as with any as with any lawn uh grass we get some disease issues and things but it it seems to be um where's my Where's my notes here? Uh, that it's uh, does yeah. I think it's a little more resistant to the large patch, which is a disease issue in St. Augustine lawns, and you know they've been testing it for that as well as gray leaf spot. Um, both of these having some some tolerance or better tolerance to it. Cinch bugs, okay, they're still gonna have to treat for cinch bugs, but um, not the best at that and. Uh, does pretty well with sod webworms so it's something that you know if somebody's looking to resod their lawn maybe you know in a in a year or two it, it is being grown it is being released um to something to it's sounds like a nice a nice new grass going back to the habitat thing mm-hmm. the class for the habitat do the let's see how do you how do i ask this if you build the habitat it's kind of like that that movie if you build it they will come they will come yeah and yeah. and and if you build something specifically for a beneficial crit- critter, mm-hmm. and that will help with the bugs, right? That'll it'll work out. You'll, yeah, you'll get yeah. If you if you and, and it is true. If you build it, it will come. If you put together uh, the proper plants to say, just for example, butterfly gardening. Everybody loves the butterflies, this and that. So if you're bringing in and putting plants in that are larval food, that's for the caterpillars to eat. And you're also putting in plants for uh, the adults, the, the nectar foods. You will have these butterflies come to your garden. You just have to realize you now are not spraying insecticides and that with these beautiful butterflies, you are also going to get predatory insects and lizards and other things. To come eat the bugs. Because bar- the, they're the butterflies, going to come yeah. and, and, and it because that's the web. That's, that's the, the food that's chain. That's the way it works. Huh? That's right. the way it works. You can't be upset that uh, a wasp who, who lays their eggs in caterpillars comes to your garden <laughs> when you are inviting right. caterpillars to be in your garden. Um you know, and and so it is. It is a give and take in nature. Not everything that hatches survives. That's right. It's just the way it. Just the way it is, with or without mankind's interference. I know. I know. I know. There was a thing this morning about the turtles laying eggs in the hot sand, and they're all coming out female. Did you hear that? Yeah. I, yeah. So something. Yeah. That the sands what? are. Really. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. All right. Good morning. You're on there with Caroline. <laughs> Yeah, good morning, good morning. Yes, um, as I remember, uh, uh, chrysanthemums and marigolds repel, repel mosquitoes. Uh, you know, just something else to put in the mix. But, but, and but, uh, have a good morning. Yeah, the other fun thing about marigolds, though, is that the little dwarf boleros that everybody loves attract snails. So, again, you have... The whole, yeah, so that whole thing. So, do you need to know this in advance? Nah, just no, realizing just that you may it. have, you know, yeah. you may have both of those issues. And again, with all those repelling mosquitoes, the best way those plants, lavender does it, uh, lemongrass does it. Um, if you notice, though, when you buy a natural mosquito repellent, liquid kind of thing, you're mm-hmm. going to put on your skin. It's in a liquid form. It's not that you set the bottle near you and that that smell sends them away. It's because it is the oils have been removed from that plant and you're applying them you have to crush those plants to release those oils for repellency to work ah, so okay. you can Good surround to, you your patio yeah, yeah. in these wonderful plants but unless there's something that you're going through and and bruising some of them in order to release the oils they're just pretty Nothing. plants. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Pretty much. I mean, they'll they'll offer some repellency but not near what they would if you do the yeah, and you have another phone call. Good morning, right. you're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning. I just wanted to know your radio number. Is it AM? We're both AM and FM. We're ninety six point three FM and thirteen seventy AM. 
What is the FM again? 96.3. Thank you. You're welcome. There you go. Thank, welcome thanks, to the show. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Um, I know I remember my page here is is something that I also wanted to bring from uh, our edu- you know our education that went on last week on the uh, Cuban Cuban tree frogs. They have they pretty much everybody everybody's seen them. But oh, they're cute. They're cute, but they get big. They could be a nuisance. <laughs> uh, they're the ones that are probably leaving a lot of droppings along the the white siding on your house and mm, things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That you're getting quite a uh, that more than one will will congregate in areas. Um, there are ways and and the humane way to remove them to get rid of them is to catch them in a plastic bag put it in the fridge for a oh, couple no. of hours then throw that. it in the freezer I know. and then throw it in the garbage oh my god um and and you know if you feel if you have a, an issue with them i mean you can even get like pvc pipe yeah and get get a long length of pvc pipe and and cut it so it's at an angle so you got something to bang in the ground make a point yeah. and you can put these like in areas say you know around where you where you see a lot of them put them in the ground you can check them every so often you just bang it in so it stands upright uh-huh. and look inside oh lucky there's one there and you can get something and, and push them through into your baggie so that you can uh <laughs> get a sponge or something uh. and cut it so it fits in tightly shove those guys out and uh into a into a bag Freeze or plastic them. container throw them in the fridge first slow them down throw oh, them in the yay, freezer, yay. throw them in the garbage hope i uh, never get the munchies at your house yeah. <laughs> good morning you're on, the earth, you're on the air with carol ann <laughs> Uh, yes, good morning. Um, I have a, my friend of my house faces um, north, and it's got a lot of trees, so it's very shady. Uh-huh. And I made some flower boxes out of old rusty, um, it was like a tractor, you, you know, that oh. picks up balls on a golf range. Right, okay. Anyways, I put impatience in them because I thought those usually grow in the shade, but they're not doing too well. Is there any other plant that you could suggest that yeah. would be colorful? Yeah, marigolds are for the sun. Full, full sun. They love the sun. Uh, you might think of begonias, um, terrinas, another shade plant. Uh, there's a lot of different begonias out there, so you can even actually come up with a different, you know, with that have different leaf structures. You might even end up with, with a collection of them once you find out they're kind of cool. Uh, gingers, um, but your gingers are usually are large, so you're not looking for those too much. Uh, right. But your, you know... Um, Coleus will do in the shade, um, which but they're all these are all annual plants. Your begonias usually will last for years so long as they don't freeze. Impatience. Okay, well, thank you very much. Sure, you're, and also impatience or something else to take a keep an eye out for. Okay, thank right. you. Have you're a good welcome. day. Uh-huh. Thank you for the call. Uh, phone number is six two two nine six two two. Just kind of let you know how we do the phone calls. There is nobody who will say hello or even answer the phone call. What happens is it just gets answered, and you just kind of wait there in limbo. And then when Carolyn takes a breath, I, and I, then I push the button up, and then you're on the air. Just so you know. Just got away from me to go. <gasps> <laughs> to away from me to just shut up for a minute. Um, going back to what we were talking about earlier about t- trying to transport plants across state lines. I tried to look up some stuff, and I wasn't finding really what I wanted to find, at which would actually be a regulation. What I was finding is moving companies and things like that, which uh. most of your moving companies probably won't touch plants. You would have to do them yourself because they don't want to have to deal with that. Yeah, they're sense. not the one. Yeah. They're not the ones who you know, you know, are, are truly importing them. To do at the state line. Right, right. Um, I would call the. Uh, either like the the extension office into the state where you're traveling I mean, where you're going where you want to take this plant to and ask them or in department of agriculture That's the best way. just yeah. make a simple phone call doesn't cost you anything to make the call you know i mean nowadays with cell phones there's just no more long distance phone bills yeah, anybody ever right. notice that Thank we goodness. no longer have long distance phone bills um and just and just ask the question of, and and of the specific plant, and you will have the knowledge of whether or not because I was seeing some of them if they were grown in your house if they were simply a house plant, you always bought your your sterilized planting medium your miracle grow potting mix, you know it's been in the house you bought it at you bought it at local big box store it's grown in its house for whatever for all of its life that you've had it it may. It, 
be very possible to take that without any problem whatsoever. But if you're digging up a plant out of the backyard uh -huh. to move, maybe not. So that's why I said just call you know USDA even if it's here in Florida or in the state in which you're traveling and ask the question. It's real. So do you have to call every state you pass through or just the one you're going to? I would probably just call the one I'm going to, and they mm. could probably tell you even your even home state, probably even here in Florida, going, "Hey, listen, I'm traveling here. I'm going to go visit family, blah blah blah, and I wanted to carry this plant I have mm -hmm. and give it to them. Am I allowed?" They'll tell you yes or no. No, better than better than getting you know somebody stopping or you stop at a you know state line. You know, I I know people who go well. I'm not stopping at any of those USDA. You get you have no I've, choice. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, if the you know the way stations and things like that, when they tell you to stop, you're going to stop. The one I went, uh, the one that pulled, they didn't pull me over. They just kind of they just roadblock. They have yeah, this they, thing that yeah. said you got to pull in here and right, and you pull yeah. in here, yeah. Yeah. I remember as a kid traveling, we used to co uh, lived in New Jersey, would camp in Virginia, Florida, you know, here East Coast. Um, and coming back, you'd have to stop, you know, with any, uh, I think it was any vehicle, because they were looking for gypsy moth. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, the gypsy moth is horrible insect up north, you know. I mean, it's it's one of those, we, we have the moth here. But the larvae don't survive oh, in really? Florida. I don't know why, but the moth can, you know, end huh. up here. But the, you know, it does not reproduce itself successfully here in Florida. But it was one of those things. You stop because they're going to inspect. And if they'd, you know, if they'd have found them, they'd have probably had to fumigate or whatever. They had, they'd had to clean off your your vehicle somehow. You know that, you know, if they were transported. So. And and we all know that insects can hitch a ride. I mean, that's um, you know, air, air potato beetle, little guy. You know, found one one day. He was on my car, and when I stopped for gas, and it was like, oh wow, he's you know came all the way from the yard. I'm now in, <laughs> you know. A very, you know, no air potato here. And I went, paid for my gas. I come back, and where's he at? He flew off yep. somewhere. <laughs> so hopefully, he found you know because those are those are good bugs uh, uh -huh. for us. That Have you ever had a, a, a like through. a grasshopper on your windshield? And you yeah. try to say, I wonder what speed he'll finally yeah. be have to let go. Yeah. And they hang on. You are 50 hang, miles an hour. Yeah. They're still hanging like, on. You're kind of go. I hate when I get the lizard or the frog or something. It's like, <laughs> Where can I pull over and let you go? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and and save you and hope you don't run out in the middle of the you know the asphalt and and get run over after I've tried to save your life. <laughs> That's right. You That's know. right. Yeah. I know. I did see a video um, which would have probably freaked me out pretty good too. It's someone was driving down the road and a snake came out from under the hood. Up uh, towards oh. their windshield. Holy mackerel! Uh, it, it was on the outside, which yeah, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. make sure the windows are rolled up. And but it's like, oh boy, what do you do? And oh, gee, and yeah. they're, they're trying to run the wipers. I mean, to me myself, I'd have pulled over. You know, I I don't want to harm the thing. Push them off the yeah, thing. or something like that. Or you know, yeah, hey, I'll call nine one one. I know you talked <laughs> about. I think last me. week you had a pretty snake at uh, yes, Lowe's yeah. where you were. Yeah, we had a yeah had a. And what uh, was that red, called again? Just a red rat snake. Red just, rat. Yeah, you know, just a just. It a, was pretty. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He, he was a neat snake, and I mean, they it happens. He was harmless. I mean, we had a everybody got pictures of him, and he was not. You know, he's the the toe one. It was just keeping him in place so I could run and go get the bucket and the picker uppers and. <laughs> throw him in a bucket and put the lid and carry him outside and and when he, when i turned that bucket over you know i tapped the top make sure he was down in took the lid off laid the bucket <laughs> over he slithered into that grass and by the time his tail was out of that bucket i couldn't see him he was gone just i disappeared could not the grass. see him i mean the grass was kind of tall but he was very colorful very you know the reds and browns on and you couldn't you could not see him in the uh in the grass when he took off so very well camouflaged so hope he hope he was you know had a, had a good has a good life now from here on and stays out of my veg, out of my uh garden center so he doesn't freak out anybody else we have enough frogs that freak people out and uh you know when they come jumping out of of things and lizards that startle people but 
the snakes are, I think, are the worst. When people see them, they automatically think that they're a dangerous uh, snake and want to kill them all. And we try really not to kill snakes because there's only about five in the state of Florida uh -huh. that are uh, dangerous. Uh, snakes will actually, as, my, as I always tell people, they'll cause us to hurt ourselves versus uh, that they will hurt us you know when we step back and stumble over something uh because it startled us um there are some s like snake snake away you know snake repellent kind of things but if you actually read the label i mean there's a lot of sulfur in them um but I think the testing really only shows that they work for uh, rattlesnakes oh, and, really? and garter snakes. And you have to put like a six-inch wide band around the home, the, the area you uh -huh, want to repel uh -huh. them from. You have to make sure that you've got anything onto the other side of where you're repelling or you're trapping them on that side. And what do you do when it rains? I mean, it doesn't last forever, especially not here in Central Florida, yeah. where this time of year it rains. And this time of year you see snake activity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just one of those things. So you just have to learn to, to yeah. live with them um, and realize that they're not out to get you. Carolyn, you know. what yes. is the tall grass that people prefer to leave tall? I, I don't know if this, I found maiden grass. I don't well, know if that's it or not. There's pampas grass. It's just people use it as ornamental. Big, yeah, like there's it grows ornamental three grass. Feet tall. Yeah. There's ornamental grasses. Your pampas grass will get about six feet, six to seven feet, has the real big plume. Real big feathery plume ah, okay, on that okay. one. That one's pampas grass, and that one's real sharp. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of it because it is really um, painful. Painful. Hurt, hurt yeah, you? yeah, okay. the, yeah. It hurts, and it's and it's very dense and hard to cut back. Some of the other ones uh, that you'll find in the stores, you'll find your um, white fountain grass, red fountain grass. There's fakahatchee grass. Um, the the muley grass will be one this is august you, next month that'll start to bloom when you plant that that one's a real fine I'm trying to think if that's any muley over there that's white fountain grass i think across the way by the the people crossing sign the pedestrian sign oh really that's what that is there's a i think there's white fountain grass over there i think there is some muley grass in here a little somewhere. thing going we got our own little environment right here yeah You've got yeah, you got white fountain grass out there or not yeah, white fountain grass out there. But the muley grass is the one that's got a really fine, a real thin blade. It doesn't get but oh say two and a half, three feet high, but it gets covered in the pink bloom and it just looks like a haze of pink when it's planted okay, in mass okay. that this little cloud sort of floats above the the grass and it blooms usually um i want to say september into october and so people come running for it in the stores at that time trying to get some when they start to see it bloom that's you know and the the ornamental grasses are nice because you can take and you can cut them way back in early spring clean them up real good they're not big feeders um most any plant that's established you don't have to feed them too much um and they come back they'll grow they fill an area give some height give some movement in the garden when they blow yeah yeah and yeah, that yeah. so it's um you know they don't really feed anybody um they can get a couple little pest issues here and there that you know some uh, looks to me like we have some bamboo in this garden too back there see the real tall thin ones is that am I right? Where, is that where, not bamboo? Where are we where are we looking? I'm thinking you can't see it. Maybe not. Right I don't think there's wall. any. Yeah, I don't. Oh yeah, against the wall over there. Yes, that is bamboo. That is bamboo there. And if you notice, you're not seeing it come up all over the place. So that's one of the clumping oh, bamboos. Okay, okay. It's not a runner. Because we have that's plenty good. of that at the Cascades. Yes, yeah, we, we had, had, we had several different ones at the Cascades, I uh -huh, believe. Uh -huh. That, but this is one. It is quite tall, but it's still a narrow uh, stemmed bamboo. Um, but it's more of a. It's a clumping. That's why you're not seeing it coming up in the hedges over here and that. So. Yeah, that's why so it's and you and I noticed on your Facebook page you had also um, some research you did on the bronze was it bronzing? Um, yeah, I had shared a uh, uh, I think this is the full article. It's from the Florida Friendly Landscaping. It's uh, that they were posted posted a picture of healthy palm and the diseased palm with the lethal bronzing, so bronzing, somebody can yeah, actually yeah. see what that looks like. Um, 
So people don't freak out just immediately that they've got a brown leaf. I mean, the fronds uh, will turn yeah. brown on a plant um, yeah, looks, at any time. Looks pretty serious for the tree. Yes, looks, it is. It's it's lethal. It's, it is basically it's, it's the end of the tree. Huh? It's the end of the tree. I mean, we have there's a few different things out there that are just. When you start to see the symptoms, it's actually too late, and the lethal bronze oh. is pretty much. Oh my gosh! Yeah, when you really, by the time that's diagnosed, there's generally mm. not much you're going to do about it. I always goes fast. Uh, yes, thank you does. for doing this, Caroline. For those who don't oh, know, Caroline pleasure. volunteers her time to do this each week, and we love this segment. It's a, a breath of fresh air. Uh, do you have to work today? I sure do. Well, go yeah. see Caroline at Lowe's <laughs> in Lake. I'm down in, down in the village. Lady, down in Lady Lake. Lake. Lady yeah. Lake, okay. Um, call us if you need to know anything regarding anything you hear on WOCA. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News, I'm Chris Foster. Jeffrey Epstein's suicide, the New York Post reports by hanging with a bed sheet in his cell, is under investigation by the House Judiciary Committee. The panel sent a letter to the Bureau of Prisons asking 23 questions, including whether the decision to take him off suicide watch was discussed with executive branch personnel. The letter gives the acting director of the Bureau of Prisons until August 21st to respond.